welcome everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to reuse an old canvas to make a new painting using gesso. Let's take a quick peek at our supplies and then let's do some gessoing. Having a nice big soft wash brush is essential. I love using brushes that are at least one inch, but really up to five inch wash brushes are fantastic, depending on the size canvas you have. My absolute favorite brush, and the one I'll be using today, is this big soft brush here. Brushes that don't work so well for gessoing are brushes like these. These brushes are really, really stiff. So if you want a smooth surface, these are going to have a lot more texture for you. And these types of brushes are also really, really prone to shedding. So if I just pull it gently, you see I'll get a few hairs there. And we don't want those ending up in our freshly gessoed canvas. There are many, many great types of gesso out there. I do quite a bit of reusing my old canvases. I don't like sending them to the landfill. And you can reuse them many times. And I'll be using this giant jug of Rayotech white gesso. You can get black gesso, you can get clear gesso, and you can even get color gesso. But for this demo, we're going to go with white, so it looks like a fresh canvas. If you're accustomed to painting on these pre-stretched canvases that you get from the store, then you're already working on pre-primed canvases. That means these already have a coat of gesso on them, and you can tell by looking at the back of your canvas, you'll see this is the raw canvas, which is a bit more of a yellowy tan color, and you can really see the texture of the woven fabric. Whereas the little gesso edges around here, you can see they're quite white. Gesso is made of acrylic resin, calcium carbonate, which is just chalk, and white pigment, and it's typically titanium dioxide. Now, gesso is a little bit different than plain acrylic paint it stops the absorbency of the raw canvas fabric, which really just sucks up all of our paint. It also makes it nice and white, and unlike regular acrylic, it can be sanded to a very, very smooth, flat surface if you want it. You can also use gesso to build up texture on your surfaces, or if you're working on paper or in books, it'll give you a more solid substrate to paint on. Gesso also happens to be a lot cheaper than your regular white paint, and it will go a lot further for a lot less money. You may want to sand your canvas down if you find it has a lot of texture on it and you're going for a really, really smooth surface. Now, oftentimes, I personally just gesso right on here and I leave the texture below, but when you want a really, really flat, smooth surface, we're gonna do some sanding. I like grabbing a sanding block and some fine sandpaper, like a 220 grit or a 150. Fold your sandpaper over your sanding block and start sanding down any unwanted texture on your picture plane. Once you've got the desired smoothness on your canvas, and you can run your fingers along there to really feel it out. We want to give it a nice wipe down with some paper towel, a little bit of a damp paper towel, before applying the gesso so we can pick up any of the dust, the acrylic dust that we created. So you get a little bit of water on your napkin. Let's just give it a really gentle rub. And you can really see we've got a lot of dust. Something I always like to do before getting right into gessoing as well, especially if I've used the canvas many, many times, if you ever find your canvas is a little bit slack because you've used it a lot, maybe it's been hanging around for a while, you can tighten the whole surface of the canvas like a drum just by putting some plain water on the back of your canvas. So we can take a nice big brush, turn it around, and just put a nice coat of water on there. 
This will give us a nice, tight, tight canvas as this water starts to dry. And even if you, say, left a canvas out and it's got really, really, really loose, adding water can really tighten even severely dented canvases. So never fear. They can almost always be reused and fixed up. Okay. So this will make our canvas tight like a drum. It's time to gesso. So grab your favorite brush and go into your gesso and we want to apply a very generous coat of gesso. So I like grabbing a very large amount of gesso on my brush and I'm going to wad on a big amount and then I like spreading it around. It should really feel loose and just glide around the canvas. If you're unaccustomed to gesso, you will notice that it's a lot thicker and harder to push around than just your plain acrylic paint. It's designed to be a really opaque layer, whereas acrylic paint, like your regular titanium white, is actually designed to be ever so slightly bendable and a little bit translucent. All acrylic paints can be worked up in glazed layers, so they're always a little bit see-through. Whereas your gesso is going to be much more matte as it dries and very opaque. If you're an artist that loves working with texture, and here I'm just going for a smooth coat so we can really reuse this for another project. But gesso holds its peaks. So if I wanted to have a palette knife and you know have some lines of texture, it will actually hold those peaks as it dries. So if you're someone that loves texture and doesn't want to shell out money for those expensive texturizing mediums, gesso will really do the trick. You can get really creative with how you use your gesso and it's much more cost effective. There are many homemade recipes for gesso. And those usually use calcium carbonate so you can really get affordable gesso. You can make your own gesso. Keep blending this out, nice smooth strokes. If your gesso like mine is a little bit old, I, this is a huge bottle, it's one gallon, and I paint a lot. I find this even hard for me to get through because there's so much of it in there. And you can see we're just using little bits of it. So if it's really old, it sometimes gets a little bit too thick and sticky towards the end. So you can go into a little bit of water if you would like and just add a little bit as you need it. You may find you don't need it. And if you've got a big soft brush, I like the ones that have you know, really long bristles because they don't gouge into the paint. I can just glide softly over here and get a really, really smooth surface. The reason it's important to get a nice smooth surface, especially if you're going for that smooth instead of textured look, is it will have less sanding to do later should we decide we want another coat. So I always like soft bristles if I'm going for a smooth, smooth look. I use really big brush strokes to get my whole arm into there. And there we go. You can paint around the edges if you would like, but I usually find when I do a new painting, enough color gets around the edges that I don't need to do those as well. Okay, that's it. We've coated our old painting in some gesso. Let's give this a dry and see how it looks. And that's all it takes. Our painting is nice and smooth and white and ready for a new painting to be painted on it. You may notice a little bit of the background color shining through. I find the acrylic paint covers this very, very easily, but if you're working with really, really pale yellows and oranges and you really want to mask everything up, you can do the whole process again. You can go in for another layer of gesso, or if you also want to make it really, really smooth, you can also get back in there with your sandpaper and do the whole process again. Well, that's it for basic gessoing. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. 
Take care. Until next time. Bye.